In this video, we're going to squeeze the highest performance out of our LU decomposition algorithm. Here you see the high performance Lindbeck bench benchmark, which is uh, taken from the top 500 list from June 2022. And uh, in this list, you, you see how fast the su top supercomputers of the world are. The middle line gives the fastest, the top line gives the sum of all the 500 uh, best supercomputers in the world. And to achieve the uh, numbers, to get the numbers in this, uh, in this picture, uh, a benchmark based on LU decomposition, dense LU decomposition, is performed. So that's one reason why LU decomposition is important. So how do we get extremely high performance? A good idea is sometimes to delay computations, to perform them in batch, and then you can perform them more efficiently. And that is what we do here. We create bulk by postponing all the updates of the lower right-hand corner of the matrix. And so everything beyond columns and rows K1 is postponed. So we don't immediately start at the K from our, uh, at stage K, we start a little bit later, and only those, those, those computations we delay. And after a while, when uh, we reach uh, stage K1, then we perform all those delayed updates. And this, this is a triple loop that we then get. You recognize the loop over i and j, where we're changing the a, i, j's. But then we have an outermost loop from, the, from k0 to k1. And when we count the flops of this, uh, this triple loop, then you see that we have n minus k1 squared, that's the inner two loops, times b times 2 flops. And the number of data that we touch is n minus k1 squared. So my question to you is, what is the advantage of doing this kind of update? Well, you may have thought about it. The main advantage is that we reuse the data b times, and that is beneficial for the cache of the computer, this quick memory where, uh, where we uh, store data that we use a lot. And then we can formulate this triple loop in linear al al algebra language uh, as the multiplication of a tall and skinny matrix A21 and the matrix A12 and subtracting their product from the lower right-hand corner matrix A22. So if K, uh, K1 equals K0 plus 1, so if, if we only have one column uh, in this, uh, this tall and skinny matrix, then this is the regular algorithm. But now we have a broader, but still quite uh, tall and skinny, matrix that we, that we use, and the other matrix then uh, is the transpose of that matrix. So this means we can use matrix-matrix multiplication, which has very efficient implementations based on proper use of the cache. And if we then count the number of flops that in the whole algorithm is carried out in, this, uh, in, uh, in these delayed updates, then we get a formula uh, 2n cubed divided by 3 minus bn squared plus a lower order term. So we can ignore this lower order term, but when we look at what values of b we want to choose, then you see if we uh, take a small b, then, uh, most of the, then most of the flops, they are uh, in this increased computing rate, so they, most of the flops are delayed and then uh, we, we have a, a, a higher rate. On the other hand, we need to take b large enough to benefit 
from the reuse of the data. Okay, so when we look at what we do in an algorithm, we actually uh, want to avoid three things, computation, communication, synchronization. We want to avoid everything. Now, for avoiding computation, which is just basically trying to minimize the number of flops, we minimize and we balance the flops. We actually don't call algorithms that avoid computation, computation avoiding algorithms, because that's what you want to do always. Uh, on the other hand, for communication, we try to avoid communication. And one of the methods that we, we have seen is uh, two-phase broadcasting. And there are other methods. Some people call such algorithms communication avoiding algorithms, but we won't do that. Then BSP is based on super steps with the synchronization. Still, ex synchronizations can be expensive, so we also try to avoid all these global synchronizations. Methods to do that is combining super steps, and there are other methods as well. Exploiting as much as possible what you can do with communication within a single super step. There's always a trade-off between computation, communication, and uh, synchronization, and also the memory uh, that we uh, use. A way of distributing the matrix that we have seen is the cyclic distribution. Another one is the block distribution. But we can also combine them, and that is the block cyclic distribution, where basically you uh, take little blocks of the matrix and distribute them in a cyclic distribution. Here we see an example with a block size beta equals 2, meaning we have little 2 by 2 blocks, and those we distribute by the cyclic distribution over 2 times 2 processors, a square cyclic distribution. The formula that you then get is that for the row distribution, uh, row i of the matrix, you first compute the block a number, that's by i div divided by beta, and then, then you uh, do that modulo capital M, and something similar for the columns. So this is the block cyclic distribution, and if you take beta equals 1, then you get the regular cyclic distribution back. Now, if we use this distribution within LU decomposition, then uh, it has some, some effects. First of all, the synchronization, if we don't have pivoting, then the synchronization is reduced by a factor of beta, because uh, we can handle beta columns of the matrix uh, within a single super step. So that's an advantage. But synchronization is only of order n times l, uh, and it's less important than communication and uh, also computation. Now the computation is affected because now if you, uh, if you have a little block of beta times beta, uh, that's a factor of beta squared more in balance if you get such an extra block than in the case of single matrix elements. So imbalance deteriorates by a factor of beta squared. And actually, communication doesn't change. So the data that you need elsewhere, you still need elsewhere. And then comparing the effect on communication, synchronization, and uh, computation, we see that it is best just to choose beta to be equal to 1, because then you have the best load balance and the, the deterioration in the synchronization doesn't matter that much. So beta equals 1 is best. Let's uh, summarize this. So we can obtain high performance just by trying to formulate algorithms in terms of matrix-matrix multiplication. Here, it's a tall and skinny matrix. I love that name. 
tall and ma skinny matrix times the transpose of a tall and skinny matrix. Then we have seen that we, we can create matrix matrix multiplications by using algorithmic blocking, delaying certain parts of the algorithm so that later we can do them efficiently. We also saw blocking of a distribution. The block cyclic distribution is an example. But then the two different, two block sizes, they can be different. They should not necessarily be the same. And actually, the best is to have a, a good block size for the algorithm, but just take blocks of size 1 for the distribution. Now a final question to you. Assume that we want to multiply a tall and skinny matrix A of size n times b and a matrix B of size b times n, where the, the sizes are lowercase b. And uh, assume that you have a computer cache which can, uh, can uh, contain three matrices of size b times b. How would you, for this computer, carry out the matrix multiplication?